FX Sound is a tool that gives you more control over your computer's audio system. It's a software package for Microsoft Windows. This is free and open source software. I'll put a link down below if you'd like to grab a copy. It's not encumbered with any advertising or anything annoying like that. And on my computer, it seems to work really well. And what it does is it installs a virtual sound device and sets that as your default audio device. So all audio and sounds on your computer get routed through this virtual device. And then inside of FX Sound, in its configuration, you specify where your output sound device actually is that is connected to or driving your loudspeakers. And that way, with FX Sound, you can make adjustments to the sound properties that go beyond what normally comes with Windows. And the part of FX Sound that I was personally attracted to was a multi-band equalizer. It has a 10-band graphic equalizer, which you can also go into settings and expand out to 31 bands if you want to have even more fine control. And with the equalizer, I'm able to make adjustments to make my system sound better in the room that it's in. And I also have some outdoor speakers which require their own EQ curve, and so I can set that up as well. And the equalizer allows me to easily switch between different saved EQ curves depending upon if I'm listening to my desktop speakers, the outdoor speakers, or headphones. In addition to an equalizer, there are several other features. Let's now switch over to the computer and I'll give you a quick tour of the control panel for FX Sound. Here is the FX Sound control panel. FX Sound is a virtual Windows device that installs and becomes your default audio device, and it processes audio and then passes it on to your actual audio output device to drive your speakers or headphones. Let's take a look at the overall system settings. Under system settings, we can define what our actual output device is that the speakers are attached to. We can choose how many bands of equalization we would like to be able to adjust. We have master gain, which is overall volume level of the system. I've just left it at default or unity. Normalization is a function that lifts up quiet sounds and brings down loud sounds to try to equalize the volume of different sources that come through the system. Again, I've left that at default. Filter Q, I've also left it default, and that affects how wide of a band each of the equalizer bands actually adjusts. And we have a balance control, so if you have some imbalance between the left and right speakers, you can adjust that right here. The other choices don't really affect system operation. On the main screen, most prominently, we see a graphic equalizer. I've got mine set to a 10-band EQ, but as you just saw in settings, you could expand this out to up to 31 bands of equalization if you need more fine control. To adjust the equalizer, we just simply move each of the points around as needed, and underneath each band, we have a control which targets the exact frequency of that band. So that makes this equalizer a semi-parametric equalizer. And it's uh, very nice that you can target the exact frequencies that you want to adjust. Over on this side are some additional features, most of which, personally, I don't make much use out of. But the first one is a clarity control, which adds a little bit of secret sauce that makes the high end sparkle more. Then we have a control called Ambience, which adds a bit of a reverb type effect. Below that, we have a control that it makes the stereo image appear wider and more spacious. This control here is a volume maximizer. So if you have some program material that's really quiet and some that's louder, if you turn this up, it provides a compression type feature that makes everything come through the system at a more consistent volume level. 
It can also be used to just generally push up the level of quiet sources and make things have a more consistent volume level. And finally, the bottom control is a bass enhancement control that, like the clarity control at the top, has a little bit of special sauce that makes bass more prominent. Personally, I don't make great use of these sorts of effects, but I do find the equalizer to be most useful and convenient. After you've made the adjustments to your liking, you can save that as a curve. And up in the upper left-hand corner here, you'll see all of the settings that you have saved previously. And so if I want to change over to listen to the outdoor speakers, I would just choose that curve and recall those settings. When I'm done with that and want to go back to the desktop, I just pick the other curve. So I find this to be a really convenient tool for adjusting the audio on my computer to give me the best sound. Let's talk about some of the potential negatives of having FX sound installed on your computer. One of the things is that it's going to consume some processing power. In order to do the tasks that it does, it requires some computer processing power to do that. And so if you're using an older or slower computer, if you have lots of EQ bands enabled, it's possible that there might be some performance impact on your computer, and potentially there could be some glitches with your audio where occasionally it stutters because of performance limitations. I'm speculating here because I have not experienced any of these issues with my computer. With my computer, it's worked just fine, and I haven't noticed any performance impact or problems whatsoever. One thing I have noticed is that FX Sound is pretty aggressive about demanding that it is your default audio device in Windows. So once FX Sound has been installed, if I go to Settings in Windows and pull up its sound control panel, it doesn't allow me to change away from FX Sound to another sound device for my output. If I want to disable FX Sound and just pass audio straight through without any modification, I can go to the FX Sound control panel and turn FX Sound off. There's a button at the top of the control panel that enables or disables all of the features. And so I can just, using that inside of FX Sound, say disable FX Sound, and then it just passes the audio straight through it without modification. And that seems to work just fine. So I don't consider that to be a major issue. All audio processing on the computer in the digital realm takes just a little tiny bit of time. So I'm certain that the use of FX Sound increases the audio latency very slightly. So the audio that comes through the system might be just very slightly delayed because it's being passed through the FX Sound tool. Now, again, on my computer, I have not noticed this. I haven't measured it. And I don't see obvious artifacts like people's lips moving and then the voice talking afterwards or anything like that. Again, I'm speculating, but that could be a potential drawback. If you try FX Sound and for whatever reason decide it's just not for you and you want it to be uninstalled, you can do a standard application uninstall like any other program and it should remove itself from the computer, clean itself up, reboot the computer, and Windows should be operating just like it did previously. You may have to select your sound output device to the preferred output device after deinstalling FX Sound. Some people have reported in the forums that when they uninstall FX Sound, it uninstalls the application and its control panel, but it doesn't completely clean out all of the Windows drivers, and so it's still trying to pass Windows Sound events through the FX Sound driver, even though you don't have the control panel anymore, and they can't reset their audio output to their standard audio output devices. If you encounter that situation, just simply pull up Windows Device Manager, 
find the virtual sound device that FX Sound installed, right click on that and say remove. And that will remove that device. Then you should be able to reboot the computer and have FX Sound completely removed. So I think this is an interesting utility. It's worked really well for me. And if you want to have more control over the audio system in your Windows computer, well, it's something that maybe you want to explore. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the tip. Hope you enjoyed the episode. And uh, if you did, please take a quick moment and give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And hopefully, I'll see you again soon on another upcoming video.